Welcome to this segment of Hello Reading. I'm Linda Phillips, your host. This series of shows will include interviews with all our selectmen as well as our town manager to introduce you to the people who make Reading a better place to live by their selfless service to our community. Today we are here to chat with two of our selectmen, Barry Berman and Andrew Friedman. These, Hi, the topics we will be discussing has been chosen by each selectman to share information about issues and matters they feel would be of interest to our community. So let's begin <laughs> by having each person introduce themselves. Welcome Mr. Berman, Barry, and Mr. Freeman, Andy. Hi, nice Linda. to have you yeah, here. No, it's great to be here. Thanks Thank for doing this. This is great. This is great. You're welcome. Let's see how, how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so Barry, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, okay. how long you've lived in Reading, and a little bit about your family, okay. if you don't mind. Yeah, so um, we came to Reading about 20 years ago. Um, uh, we were renting in Winchester, um, bought a house here, um, fell in love with the town right away. Um, we have a rising uh, college, uh, <laughs> we're trying to get a, a college, a high school senior out of the house, so that's been really exciting. Um, and um, uh, my wife, Laura, is a special ed uh, attorney, an advocate. Um, I work in, in banking and we just, uh, we just love it here. Um, what kind of participation have you done in the community? Have you done any activities, uh, sports sure. committees? So yeah, so um, when I first got here, I you know we didn't have any children at the time, so basically like everybody else, um, I knew my next door neighbor on the left, my next door neighbor on the right, and we both went to work. So we didn't really start getting involved until until my son came along and um, got involved in a lot of the activities that he that he was into, scouting, baseball. I, I coached in Reading Youth Baseball. Um, got involved in some of the um, electoral activities that was that were coming around at that time. It was um, the building of the new high school, the renovation of Barrows. We're, we're a Barrows family, so that was a, a particularly interesting topic for us. And in fact, my son was the first graduating class of the new Barrows after they renovated. So through that, got involved in town meeting and um, sparked an interest in in uh, um, my further involvement. Was appointed to um, finance committee. Um, and then three years ago got elected to the selectmen. So it's been kind of a, um, a constant kind of a train ride. A growth, uh, a growth. And growth, yeah. And, and really basically what, um, what it does, it starts out, um, it starts out by just um, volunteering for something, you know, getting elected to town meeting, getting interested. So it's really, um, there's no, um, there's no um, impede you know, impediment for people who are really interested to do this, um, you know, to really to, to keep going. So it's uh, it's been great. Uh, what was the compelling motivator I used <laughs> uh, that got you into <laughs> volunteering? Because it isn't for yeah. everyone. Um, no, I mean, just you know, my family, my background, my um, my my parents were doers. We were always taught that uh, when we were growing up, you you see a need, you fill a need, and. If you see something that needs to get done, just don't wait for someone else to do it. Raise your hand and do it. So um, my mom was in the PTO. My dad was a coach. Um, so it was all that um, kinds of things that we saw growing up, my brothers, and, uh, my brothers and I, that sort of said that, you know, just don't, if, don't wait for someone else to kind of do it. You do it. So, and there were a lot of things going on in Reading at the time that, um, that were interesting and compelling. Um, you know, this is the kind of town where, you really can make a difference. You, um, uh, it, it, you know, town government really is government of the people. So, um, you know, you just can't wait for someone else to kind of just do it and say they, the they can be you. So, uh, it's been it, it, it it's been great. Uh, what what do you do in your day job <laughs> that gives you a grounding or assists you in your night job? Right. So, um, like I said, I, I work in banking. Uh, I, I'm a, a managing director at First Republic Bank. Um, and as part of that job, I, I'm a commercial lender, a residential lender, so I'm looking at complicated balance sheets and complicated deals. Um, so I have kind of a, a, a head for numbers, but that's been sort of like a second career for, my, for me. I, I started out when I graduated from college. Uh, my first job, I was a VISTA volunteer. I worked in, in poor neighborhoods in Worcester and in Lynn, um, working with low and moderate income families and um, got a degree from the Kennedy School of Government in, um, in community development and planning. Um, worked for the city of Boston where we built uh, a lot of affordable housing. So 
Uh, worked in the state senate. I was a legislative director for a state senator. So I kind of understood that you know politics and government was not just sort of knowing well the issues and the policies, but it was also a very very people oriented uh, business. Right? You just can't have good ideas. You have to work with people and you have to compromise. You have to get things done. Same at the bank. Um, you know, you, you have a project you want to do and you have to convince people that you want to do it. So it's a lot of knowledge, it's a lot, um, but it's also a lot of people skills. And it's customer service. And I think that's what, that's what gov town government is. It's, um, you know, the taxpayers are our clients and our customers. And we have to take care of them. We have to take good care of their money. Um, and we have to give them, um, you know, we just can't take things for granted. Um, it, you know, we're a service-oriented service, in, service -oriented industry. So uh, when I finish, when I come home, I have my dinner, put, you know, put my second hat on and, you know, just use the same skills and go about it the same way. So, um, you know, until, until the next day and we start again. Now, this is a trick question. Yeah. I don't know uh -oh. if I had told you I was going to ask this or All not, right. but. I don't know. Should we cut? I don't know. <laughs> Has your opinion of town government changed since now you're working within it? What do you um, see differently than yeah, you used I, to see? I mean, I, I still am a, f a, a firm believer in Reading town government. Um, you know, we have, we have town meeting. The people who make the decisions are your friends, they're your neighbors, they're your colleagues, the people you go to church or synagogue with, they're people who you see in the store. So, I, I, and I think that we're very transparent. I really, you know, I think that there are people who, who, who volunteer and work hard. People are doing this not because they have to, not because they're drawing a paycheck, not because um, someone told them to do it. They're doing it because they really are passionate about serving. So I, I, I am very still committed and really hopeful about town government compared to, let's say, how our state tax dollars are spent or how our federal, <laughs> I mean, you know, you go down those black holes. At least here now we know, if we don't know the answer, we know who to ask, right? There's a town manager, there's, you know, Andy and myself, if someone has a question, if it's about schools, you know, they'll go to a school committee person. And these are people that you see every day. Um, that said, uh, you know, I think the, over the last couple of years, I think maybe since I've been elected to the board, I've seen some of the fabric around how we make decisions get frayed a little bit. I think that there's sort of, you know, maybe it's the, the sort of the, the national political scene that's sort of filtering down into Reading where people maybe are a little less likely to, to listen to one another. People are sort of dug in on their opinions. There's factions and it gets, it, you know, people are mistrustful a little bit more than I've seen in the 20 or so more years that I've been volunteering in, in, in town government. So um, that's been a little frustrating, I think. Um, I, I think there's ways to go about that. I think as leaders, we have to, our job is to bring people together. It's to kind of, it's to listen. It's not necessarily to agree with everybody all the time. Sometimes you just have to tell people who are, you've been your supporters and your friends, they said, listen, thank you for that. I, you know, we're not going to go that way. And, and you be respectful. And then everybody knows that you have the best interests of Reading at heart and in mind, rather than just a, a political position you want to hold to. So I think we're sort of struggling with that a little bit here in town. I don't think we're any different really than anybody else. I think it's sort of a national kind of thing, but it beca it's becoming a little bit harder. But, you know, that said, I think I'm, that's going to be a subject for another. I, you know what? I was going to say that, and Linda, I think that you could really, um, you could make that, a, you know, a full, a full hour show about just sort of. People are really crying what, out for. What are some of the things that we can do to, I mean, I think people are just sick and tired of not getting things done. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think that it's important that we listen to, to each other. We ask questions. I mean, we just don't take things for granted. But, um, but, but listen. And, you know, it may not go your way this time. It might go your way next time. Um, but to give people the benefit of the doubt. I, you know, I think that we've had a history here of, you know, we've gone through really, really hard times in Reading, and we've all pulled through. We pulled through together. And so um, I think we can get back to that. And it's really all, all of us. Uh, it's incumbent on all of us, not just Andy or myself or the other selectmen or school committee, all of us, all the citizens to really um, kind of take a step back and, and, and commit to really working together. Because really it's the, best, it's, it's the best interest of the town, not one faction or one side or one political party or another. It's really the question you need to ask. I ask myself all the time um, whether it's you know, any agenda item that comes across the selectmen, what is the best thing for the town of Reading? I may not necessarily want to do it or agree with it. Andy may have a different opinion. Some of my colleagues will have a different opinion. And but, I might have a different and, opinion. And Linda, I know you will have definitely a different well, opinion. I have opinions, yes. Um, <laughs> and sometimes the same. But that really, the thing that motivates us is what's really best for mm -hmm. the town. So I, I, 
I'm hopeful, but I'm 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 a little um, you know I'm uh, you know I'm a little discouraged a little bit about what I've seen, but hopeful going forward. So. Thank you yep. for your willingness yeah. to serve in oh, our community. Well, really, I, I, you probably don't hear it enough, but thank you very no, much. Thank you. Now, Andrew. <laughs> yes, yes. You told me to call you Andy, and I guess sure, everyone that works. does. So, That's fine. so we'll do the same with you. Okay. So, how long have you lived in Reading? Because I don't know. I don't really know you that well. Sure, so. about 18 years. My oh, wife and okay. I moved here with our two uh, oldest two kids, who were very young at the time. Uh, found a great house in Reading and chose it primarily because of the good school system and the beautiful neighborhoods. Okay, um, have you, what have you participated in in the community as far as activities go? Have you been uh, coach, coaching yeah, or a town yeah. meeting member? I knew you were on the Board of Health, but right. maybe you could uh, share that sure. with us. Sure, I think the, the probably the, the two biggest uh, involvement, things that I've been involved with in the town are, first it was coaching soccer. I coach soccer sometimes well, sometimes not so Our well. Our kids were on the same team, that's when I met you. Our <laughs> kids were on the same team, right. Youth soccer in town. I coached all three of my kids. We adopted a third and I coached her as well. That lasted about seven years and that's a pretty big time commitment. Um, yeah. Co coaching soccer, um, youth soccer. And then I got involved in the Board of Health uh, for the last about six years, something like that. Um, and I enjoyed that, enjoyed that quite a bit, and, um, and, and that's one of the reasons I decided to step up and run for uh, selectman. What was the compelling motivator for you to, to step into public service? I think that um, <clears throat> I, I've been in public service for almost 17 years. I worked for the state, and um, I, before that I was a teacher, and then I was a, 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 a doctoral student and did some years in, just in consulting. But I, but I always want, I, I, I liked uh, the idea of co government service, of helping other people. And so I went into uh, to work for the, sta for the state, the Department of Environmental Protection about 17 years ago. Um, and so I see this really uh, as a continuation of my public service. Um, yeah. so, um, so then how does your day job or your occupation give you the grounding or the assistance to, yeah. you know, does it help you being a board of selectmen member? Absolutely, Linda. I mean, I think it helps in two ways. One is a bit technical, and that is I like reading uh, laws, regulations, policies. Do you? I do. It's, it's strange. <laughs> that's not bedtime reading. That's why there's five members of the board of selectmen. Someone's got to read the policy. Yeah. Right. Do the, right. And, and, you, and, I, and I do you don't that. read it at bedtime. I, I don't read it at bedside, but, but, but bedtime but but uh, I do enjoy doing that for the state and it's it's crucial to my job and I enjoy doing it here which is why I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to talk about town organization um, I think the other thing that that working uh, for the state has really helped me with is the ability to interact well and f in fact we're trained in this in communicating with the, the public um, and in dealing with people in the public who sometimes just need your help and finding a way to best help them uh, or at times people in the public who are rather dissatisfied with government at that point in time and um, it, the ability to sort of remain uh, cool, calm, me and measure, <laughs> measured, hear what they have to say and then try to explain uh, your position or the state's position and that's been I found tremendously helpful um, in to be able to analyze in, the in, data and to be able to uh, explain it to someone else well, and, and to understand. listen to people's I mean people come you know come come in um, you know people get emotional about town politics because it's essentially their backyard and I remember uh, specifically one selectman meeting uh, where there was some discussion of a new water tower and a new cell phone tower, and some of the local residents, some some men, got up and spoke, um, and they were pretty impassioned um, about what was being done, and they and they were not happy, uh, and so I, I did a little of this, um, and uh, that's why it's good to not wear ties that's, all the time. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. But, so you and, don't get hot on the call. Uh, but <laughs> but I I um, I was really glad they came in and and and. 
uh, even though, yeah, it was a little uncomfortable for me, as I'm sure it was for the other selectmen and, and maybe the town manager, but it was good to get that kind of feedback um, about what we're doing. Uh, because we, can re we really can't do our job better unless people come in and tell us what they're happy with or what they're not happy with. And that often doesn't happen until something goes wrong. Right. Of course. And then everyone's right. like, right. what happened to that? And and you know, yeah. yeah, why did you do that? There yeah. was like a little thing that, hap that happened uh, about my chickens. Well, I've been in <laughs> Reading 20 years myself. We all came in about mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. We fell in love with an older house. Uh, we moved here from Wilmington. We've been in the area, Woburn, Burlington, Wilmington, and we took on the challenge of restoring a, a vintage house, mm. which was fun. We had to live, stay in our home while we did it. It was such a, such a job restoring it, but it's, um, it's a joy to be there. We have a unique property in Reading with barns and outbuildings, and we have mm -hmm. chickens. I am a chicken fancier. And, and I can actually say that the eggs produced are top quality. First so, quality, yeah. yeah. It costs a way a lot more to feed them than, <laughs> their egg, than, <laughs> than to buy the eggs in the grocery store, but that was something. I have a daughter who's uh, getting a degree for animal care, and veterinary mm -hmm. assistant, and uh, so we've had many animals cross our paths over the years. Um, I'm an antique dealer auctioneer. Um, I'm actually not the auctioneer, my husband is. He does very good calling, but I uh, manage the sales. I've, I've loved the antiques since I was in high school and worked it into a business part-time while I worked full-time at Polaroid in communications where I did this sort of thing with um, vice presidents and division managers. It was a lot of, lot of fun. Um, and uh, so I thought I'd transfer some of this here. I've been a town meeting member for 17 years. I still get stopped at the grocery store. You're the lady I see on TV, you know, <laughs> like, uh-oh, is that good yeah. or bad? Usually if they say they pick me out, it's usually because yeah. they say thank you for um, you know, participating in town government. We have a little bit better understanding when people like you ask questions or participate in town government. And so we're all participating here yeah. tonight. And um, I'm just glad we could get together. We've been in the works for this for about three months over the summer and schedules didn't allow, so I'm glad we're having, uh, we're starting and uh, we're gonna be having um, the town manager, another selectman, and then two more selectmen. And that will be the end of our first series. And then the subjects up for grabs are up for grabs. They're going to be a little bit more um, um, informative and very timely to what's going on in the town. We'd start, we thought we'd start with an overview of town government mm -hmm. and different departments and things that are happening in the town that some of us might not know too well or not know very little about. So that's why uh, Barry has uh, spoken up to speak about the um, community excuse me, community development and the um, housing uh, improvements that are going on in Reading, which, which have some people very concerned. And then uh, Andy has opted to discuss the town organization. So I will give it to Barry and oh, let sure. him uh, okay. share w some uh, good news about what's going on in town. Yeah, so um, thanks, Linda. That's a, that's a, gr a great introduction. So part of um, you know, my interest in serving on the board and, and some of my interest in um, what I've done um, sort of professionally is in economic development and housing development. And it's a very timely issue for the town of Reading. So um, just to give you kind of an example of where Reading sits relative to a lot of our peer communities. So um, we, um, you know, we raise taxes, obviously the most, most important way that we fund our government is through the property taxes. And because Reading is by and large a bedroom community, um, most of the taxes fall really on the homeowners. And so compared to our, a lot of our peer communities, we raise a significantly less amount of money from commercial and industrial development. On average, about $12 million a year less. So basically what it means is that our homeowners are really, really footing the bill. And as the cost of services go up, there's a lot of, there's a pressure on, on taxes. You know, the override was, was up last year. There's talk of, you know, doing another one again. So part of what, the, um, what we started to look at is ways in which we could maximize the opportunities for development. And, and so we did a couple of different, uh, we did a couple of different studies. We um, interacted with Northeastern University through Barry Bluestone. 
and did an economic development assessment tool where we really looked hard at ourselves in the mirror to see what are our assets, what are our liabilities, what are the things that we can do to kind of um, improve our chances of being noticed by the development community so that they would in, in invest in Reading. Um, the other thing that we did is um, we did a, a, a study through um, uh, Mass uh, Commission of Planning where uh, we looked at sort of particular some development opportunities now, in town. this didn't cost the town any money. No, actually, we got grants for both. We got grants for for, for both of these. But um, what it really cost is that though, from our new person that we no. Had that's this is this is this is what we did before town. we hired our, our oh, okay. uh, economic development director. That's good to we know. We got we got grants, you know, to cover a lot of this stuff. Um, but really, what it was, it was a commitment of time and energy. It was really basically, um, you know, running town government on a day-to-day -day basis is difficult. But then to kind of take a step back and plan into the future, um, that's difficult when you have so many day-to-day -day problems that are kind of facing you. So, what did we learn? We learned that Reading has a tremendous number of assets. Um, we're we're a transportation hub, both highway and commuter rail. Um, we're 30 minutes to Boston, and more importantly, Boston's 30 minutes from us. Um, we um, have tremendous uh, school system. We have high net worth. We have a, a lot of capacity. Um, um, people who, who spend money. We have the lowest electric rates in, the, in, in one of the most lowest electric rates in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I know people don't realize it when they get their bill. So that makes us attractive for potential um, uh, firms that want to come to Reading that use a lot of energy. So um, we're also a very pretty town. Um, it's, uh, you know, we have a lot of parks, we had a lot of recreation. So there's a lot of really positive things about Reading. We, um, we also learned some things that we weren't necessarily so good at. The, our permitting was really kind of haphazard. Our zoning was a mess. So we really spent the last couple of years sort of toning that up. We redid the zoning bylaw. We hired a permits coordinator. Um, and then last year what we did is that we, we realized that um, there's so many other towns that are like us that have the same kind of assets that are trying to attract business, that are trying to grow their town um, so that you know, they, don't, they don't have to necessarily rely on, 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 uh, on, on homeowners taxes. But, so they're all competing with the same kind of companies to come in. So we basically, um, we hired what essentially is our cheerleader. We have an economic development coordinator who we actually paid for through the, um, the revolving permits fund um, and basically committed to three years. And essentially, uh, Andrew Corona is his name, and he's been going around the town sort of introducing Reading to the development community, saying, hey, don't just go drive by 28 on your way to Stoneham <laughs> or on the way to North Reading. Stop here in, in Reading. Look under the hood. See what we have to offer. Um, and, and look at some of the um, development opportunities here. Um, part of what we did is we expanded the 40 yard district downtown, so now um, we've got potentially three projects going in there, um, which will add 150 families who will live and also retail development that people will work downtown. Reading is one of those towns that um, people who work, 80% of those people leave town to go to work. So our downtown kind of becomes a, a, a little bit vacant, and those store owners there are struggling, waiting for people to come home or for the weekends to do a lot of their business. So putting people downtown, having people live downtown, and work downtown is a tremendous boon uh, for, for our um, downtown merchants. So we're, we're, we're looking at that. Um, Andrew organized uh, just a couple of weeks ago uh, an economic development forum where we invited sort of people from the development community to come in, listen to what um, the town leaders had to say. And you know, the people left very, very impressed. We did it at the library, which a lot of people hadn't seen yeah, uh, it yet. Mean, yeah. So it was like, wow, <clears throat> Reading really does invest in itself. So we're really trying to, um, we're really trying to put Reading on the map uh, to grow. Now, I know a lot of people think, oh, you know, Reading's not, go you know, it's not going to be the town I grew up in. It's not going to be the, t you know, the lovely little leafy bedroom suburban community that we all came really, you know, were attracted to when we were here. And the bottom line is, is that the, the selectmen are absolutely committed to keeping uh, the fabric and the, and the tenor of Reading the same. We're just looking at the few development opportunities that we have left, like the downtown. Another exciting project that, um, that we've been working on for a number of years, it will take a few years to do, is to, is to work with the town of Wakefield to potentially move our DPW garage um, from uh, New Crossing to Camp Curtis Guild. I heard that. That, meeting, that yeah. it, I mean, it's, it, it'll be expensive and it's a long way down the road. I don't want people to think it's gonna happen next year. But just think about what the, 
what the potential of that is. First of all, um, we build a, a new facility with Wakefield, and we put it in a way in a place where nobody lives. Um, and then you have that uh, you have that developable land, valuable commercial developable land, right off of the highway. So think of what could go there. Think of like another Walkersbrook type uh, of development. Think of office buildings. Think of a hotel. Think of all the kinds of things that will bring people and growth into the town. So, like I said earlier, we're about $12 million short in terms of what we collect from commercial and industrial. So between the downtown um, uh, 40R, between those projects, and also what's going to happen is that all the kind of land surrounding those areas now become more valuable and opened up for other development opportunity. We're going to close that gap between um, what we're collecting in commercial and industrial tax revenue and you know compared to our peer communities we may not be there because you know we're not going to be a burlington we're not going to be a woburn we're not going to build all over the place we're going to really target it to areas which will support that type of development and if we can collect that much more revenue um, from the commercial sector um, what that's going to mean it's not going to get rid of overrides um, but it's going to make them less frequent and less severe because now we're collecting uh, tax revenue, we're growing. You know, there's only so many single more family houses you can build, right? I mean, that, that land, ready, we're, we're pretty built out. So we really have to focus, laser focus, and target those areas that, um, that can support development so that we can grow the needle. Because really, it, it, it's something that we owe the future generations. I mean, if we could, you know, I, I, I said to, when I ran for Selectman the first time, I said, you know, my number one goal is that from the time I, I come in as a selectman to the time I leave, that basically I help put Reading on a firm financial footing for the next generation. You know, the next generation is going to have to figure out you know when problems come up again. But if we can do that, if we can get out of this cycle every year of of cuts in the school budget, cuts in public safety, trying to you know squeeze a dollar five of value out of every dollar of taxes, um, if we can get out of that cycle, give ourselves a little bit of a breath. Um, and collect more tax revenue and grow, um, then we don't have to get into these endless cycles of, of asking for, for override. It's still gonna, we're still gonna have that deficit, but if we can just collect more money from uh, the commercial sector, grow, it'll become, it'll become something that we can kind of take a little bit of a break from. So. How, how, do you, uh, how, do you feel, how do you feel about that, Andy, since uh, a lot of this work was done probably before right. you got on the board, so. Right, I'm, I'm sort of playing catch up on, on a lot of this, although I did um, see the pre some of the economic development presentations that we've had, and I think they've been very well done. I think Barry says it right that, you know, uh, people want to preserve the nature of the town and the character of the town, um, and uh, so the trick is to get the development to occur in a way that that brings in new revenue for the town and, and eases off on the on the, the need the, the, the need for overrides so much um, and um, but maintains the residential uh, characteristic of uh, the of the town. Yeah, yeah, like the sidewalks <coughs> and kids walking yeah. to school and stuff keeps right. it neighborly yeah. feeling because that's how you yeah. get to meet a lot of your neighbors when your kids go to school. Ultimately, the town will will. The, the people of the town will decide um, what direction they they want to go and how how residential they want to keep it, um, and and how much they want to develop. Yeah, we're, so I mean, yeah. So I mean, it, it's true. I mean, we're we're you know we've we've built a lot of multifamily housing. Part of some of this new development, there might be additional multifamily housing to support some of the commercial. Like I said, there's going to be a hundred. There's 150 units that have either been approved or in the planning process of, of downtown. It's vital for it's vital for for uh, for the downtown. But ultimately, what I wanted to make clear for people watching this is that, you know, Andy as a selectman, myself as a selectman, um, we just can't wave a magic wand and say, okay, we're going to build this, right? It, it it doesn't work like that. It's the market will determine what gets built and where and when. All that we can do as town leaders is basically to say, um, these are our assets. We're open for business. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to come in, get your permits. Um, we want to open the door. We don't want to put up a wall. And I think that there's, I, I think in the past, if you look back at it, when there were opportunities for Reading to expand its commercial uh, opportunities, um, people said, no, we don't want it, we don't want it. And 
you know, those, those developments didn't happen. Now we get to the point, maybe 10 years later, and we realize that, oh my God, another, another override, we're in, uh, more cuts in the school budget. Um, why don't we have the commercial development? Why, why, uh, why is it going elsewhere? I think it sort of kind of was a collective knock on the head that we should really look at this as an opportunity. Um, and again, it won't, it, it, will, it will impact some people more negatively than others, especially as we go downtown. But you know, you have, the, you have CPTC, um, which is going to you know, hold fast to design guidelines. Um, and we're not, we're not gonna, you know, we're not just basically, you know, overrunning the town. I, I said, but like I said at the um, Economic Development Forum, um, you know, we're not gonna take Bedford Falls and turn it into Pottersville. That's not what we're gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna do here, you know, reference from It's a Wonderful yeah. Life. But we are just gonna take advantage of the opportunities that we have so that we could grow smartly. Most of the growth is around um, transportation hubs around you know, the commuter rail, it's a, tremendous, it's a tremendous asset. A lot of towns don't have it. You know, we can bring, we can, people can go to work, but more importantly, people who live in Boston can come here to work. So those are the kinds of things that we're doing. It's targeted, it's structured, it's thoughtful. Um, it's not kind of haphazard, but really it's our last chance. I mean, basically, you know, the economy is good. Um, people are looking at us a little differently, a little harder now than maybe they used to, only because now we're sort of raising our hand and saying, here we are. Before, we would kind of try to hide and say, don't come, don't come near us. We don't have the luxury of doing that anymore. And to enjoy the high level of services that we have, unless we want to just keep going every three years and do a tremendous override. Nobody wants, nobody has the appetite for that. Nobody has the energy for that. Um, you know, certainly it's, it, it just, once you do that, it sucks all the energy, you know, all the oxygen out of the room, and that's all you wind up doing. You know, we have two ways of raising revenue in Massachusetts. We could raise taxes or we could grow. And, you know, they're not mutually exclusive. Sometimes we're going to have to hit the reset button and do a two and a half override, but we haven't done enough growing, um, it, you know, to sort of maximize our potential. So that's really kind of, you know, what I'm trying to do here on the board and, and really um, make that happen. In, in line with what you just said, there's always a conversation at town meeting with, uh, about changing the tax rate for business to residential. Is that something that's going to be considered again, or is that at a stalemate? Yes. Do, do yeah. we not want? Do we want to incentivize people coming to Reading by keeping the tax? Yeah. So, so just for yeah, for folks that don't know, is that basically um, the board of selectmen by um, by um, uh, statute is responsible, not just in Reading, but in all towns, is to set the tax rate every year. And you have the opportunity to basically kind of set the tax rates in such a way that you can have sort of a residential tax rate and you can have a commercial tax rate. A lot of our neighbors around us, maybe ones who have a little bit more commercial development, have a, have a, a higher tax rate on commercial than on residential, basically sort of focusing some of the shift of the tax uh, liability to the commercial sector. Because we're 92% residential, um, if we did that, yes, homeowners would save a little bit of money, um, but the, the property, the, the few commercial properties would absorb most of that. And unfortunately, the way kind of our commercial property is structured in Reading is that um, probably about 80% of the commercial structures or commercial properties in Reading are uh, valued under a million dollars. So, and 20% and of the properties are, uh, valued over a million dollars. So essentially, um, if, we, if we did it in, in, in any kind of way, it would really impact the smaller commercial properties, the mom, the mom and pops. I think ultimately what's going to happen is, um, is that we will have a shifted tax rate, but we're going to probably look at that as we grow the commercial sector more, then we can kind of look at it. The good news is that unlike an override, which in, in Reading, as you know, has happened every 14 years, <laughs> um, the selectmen get to set the tax rate every year. So every year we get new data, we'll look at it, are we growing? Can we maybe shift some of this now to the commercial side, easing up a little bit on the homeowners? Um, but we get to look at that every year. So um, you know, right now Reading traditionally has just a single tax rate. Um, we'll be looking at that again in November. Um, you know, we'll see. I think it'll be difficult to kind of do that. I'm really interested right now in spending my time in just growing that sector. And then, you know, we can get to look at it and go from there. Well, that, yeah. that, that ends on a good note yeah. on that yes. subject. Yeah. 
So, so um, Andy, you ready for the warm up <laughs> I, now? I'm You've ready. had a warm up. I'm all ready. So Andy's yep. going to talk to us about town government and the organization. He's got an organization chart. Ooh. He's got some visual aids here, <laughs> and we're going to go back to school. And Andy's going to tell us how it is. <laughs> Andy, take it away. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda, and, and thanks, Barry. Um, so I was asked to speak about the organization of town government, which I think is important for all of us to know um, about how our government is organized, really set up to do the business or the work of the town. And I apologize if I turn my back on you as I, as I tack up different parts of town government. But basically, um, I, I encourage all of you to go take a look at the um, town charter, which is up on the town website. Um, and it is, it, it's, uh, may not be the most exciting reading, but, but it's a very Homework well- Homework already and you haven't oh, no, started the class? Put, it, 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 it was put together by uh, predecessors to whom I'm very grateful because it's a well-organized town and is a great example of representative government. And um, I'm just going to tonight go through uh, this first part of this town charter and speak to how it, it uh, d divides up the tasks and the responsibilities of different parts of town government. So it, it really, it, it talks about three different groups of, of people. Um, the first is town meeting, to w which you may all be uh, familiar. There are eight precincts in Reading, and each of them may elect up to 12 representatives to town meeting. So at a full complement, there's 192 members. Town meeting meets twice a year, multiple nights uh, in the week, and um, is responsible for a number of things that I'll get into. But essentially, it's the legislative body of the town, or it's the town that the part of town, uh, part of government that makes the laws. The elected boards, and committees, spends the money too, right? And, and, uh, well, yeah, everybody spends money. You get, so you're right, but I'll talk about that. And then the, the, the second part are the elected boards, committees, and commissions. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples tonight. Uh, I apologize for leaving some out, but there's just no way I can fit everything in tonight on this board. And the last, the third group that's discussed in the charter in some detail are the appointed boards, committees, and commissions, and we'll, we'll discuss them as well. So uh, let me see. Let's start with um, some duties of, of, of town meeting. Probably the most important or the most memorable thing about town meeting that you, yeah, you all know about is the budget approval. Uh, every April we get together and approve a town budget. And the town budget is put together by uh, the town manager, ultimately, and we'll get into that in more detail. But there's a lot of discussion at town meeting around the town budget, how the town is going to spend its, its money. The town also is responsible for uh, general bylaws. Um, that is, those are the laws by which we govern ourselves. And also the zoning bylaws. So if those of you who want to put up a, a chicken coop Linda, or or <laughs> mine in, was already in, there. In, so in, I was in addition to your house, right. yeah. um, the the zoning bylaws, and these are all on the website, the town website, and I also put up links to them on a on a blog that I created. Um, you can read through, uh, and if, especially these two documents, um, for the elected boards and uh, committees. I just picked two. Um, and that's not to slight the other, the other ones, but uh, you'll see in a minute why I've done this. So the Board of Selectmen uh, is, is a group of five people that are elected uh, for three-year terms. And then there's the school committee. Was that five based on the population, or they just randomly picked five? It used to be know? three. It used to be three back in, really? the, yeah, right. in, the, in the 30s and 40s, I think it was three. Yeah. Um, we've, uh, no, we've, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think most I think towns in are five the 70s, now. it might have bumped up to five yeah. or something okay. like that. So, and then there's the school committee, which is another body of elected official. And these are the two uh, groups that you see in the news. Uh, most often. Making headlines. Making headlines, uh, exactly, right. one way or the other. Uh, earning rights of letters of editor. <laughs> right, but I mean, I think, I, I think the, these two uh, touch everyday people, uh, people's Everybody. lives yeah. uh, quite frequently. Um, and what then, you do and they do matters. So. Right, yeah. exactly, and, and uh, I'll get into the roles of these. 
um, in a minute. So some examples, I'm going to drop this, uh, of appointed boards, committees, and commissions. Um, the Board of Health is one. Uh, I'll put that up because I, that was one I was on. And most of these boards and committees, it's not going in, um, are appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Um, some are, are um, yeah. the, the appointment is divvied up. Thanks, Linda. Like. Um, so let's see, uh, Community Planning and Development Commission that Barry just talked about is another one. Um, and Conservation Commission is another example. Conservation Commission, all, and all of these uh, boards, committees, commissions, um, they have obligations under town bylaws and also under state duties under state bylaws or, or state law. So they have to answer both to the town and to the state. Um, there's also matrix, zoning. Matrix, matrix, huh? Right, yeah. yeah. So, so when you hear them do something, they, they, they don't just report to the selectmen or to town meeting or to, to others. They also um, have responsibilities that they need to fulfill for the state. And then there's also... So their reputation goes the, outside of Reading. The, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah, their legal responsibilities go outside of, of uh, the Board of Appeals or the Town of Reading. And I've lost my sound. I'm really moving around way too much, Linda. Sh shouldn't <laughs> Don't have... Don't get uh, so excited. I know, Andy. I know, I know. Um, but to, to Barry's point, there's a lot of ways to get involved in town ma management or in town government. And um, and I'm amazed at the number yeah, of volunteers. We, we oh, people, finance uh, committee. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, finance committee is another one. Um, actually, it, it is an appointed That's a board, big board, a board, huh? board and commission. They have nine people. They have nine people. It's an appointed board, but I'm going to put it under town meeting because the finance. And sorry, yeah, it's so low right. because finance committee uh, ends up um, reporting to town meeting. Yep. They're one of the three boards that that report to town to town meeting. The bylaw committee is another appointed board, but plops over here and reports to ultimately because of the, the town charter meeting. And stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they okay. can make ch ch changes to the bylaw. Um, so digging down now into the 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 municipal side of things and the school side of things. The the board of selectmen really deal with the, you, the municipal side of government, and I'll give some examples of that. And um, the school committee, a tough question here, Linda, deals with the schools, right? Um, and by state law, the school committee decides how money will be spent on the schools, and um, the selectmen uh, don't have a say in that, although they have a say in the final number. Right. Um, yeah, the school, they have bottom line authority right. so, to their budget. Right. right. And what that means is that the town only, can only approve the final amount that they will spend. Right. right. Not necessarily Even on the line Even though we'd like items. to give them advice on what to spend it on, but yeah. we can give them advice and they can decide to take it or not. Everybody and their mother, I'm sure, would like to yeah. give them advice. So uh, the school, the school committee, uh, I, I hires probably, the it, superintendent. It yeah. Hires the superintendent to run the schools. So maybe I should have flipped those. The municipal side is run by the town government, uh, town management. Um, the town manager really does the day-to-day -day operations of of the town, like the superintendent does the day-to-day -day operations of the school, and like the school committee hires and supervises the superintendent, the board of selectmen hire and supervise the town manager. Now, the town manager um, appoints a town clerk to help him do his work. Um, all those legal documents. All those legal documents. Running when for you, office. When you, gotta, you, when you, you pull gotta, papers to run for office. She certifies the elections. She certifies yeah. the elections. Uh, make a pe public she records request. That, she counts the votes at town meeting. Yeah, a lot of responsibilities of, of, of the uh, of the of the town clerk. Now the town accountant I, I put up under here is actually appointed by the Board of Selectmen um, as is the town council. Um, and the town council um, and town accountant accountant um, 
in I think in, in for practical purposes they report they they work closely with the town manager because mm -hmm. again I said the town manager does the day to day work and it is important to note that while the town clerk and the town manager probably talk about ten times a day um, and they're working closely on where you know what kind of money we have and what we're spending it on um, our town accountant Sharon Angstrom is actually appointed by the board of selectmen and there's a there's a rationale for that because you know you really want to kind of have sort of an arm's distance be, between you don't want any pressure for a town manager to say to an underling um, oh you fudge these numbers ones. or yeah. whatever so technically she reports and is appointed to the board of selectmen but she also doesn't she have fiduciary responsibility to the department of revenue uh, good question. It has to That's be a good a, question. A C, yeah. CPA. Yeah, she has yeah. to have certain. She has yeah. to be yeah. certified. Yeah. But I think yeah. she also. I mean, if they have a question, they go through her first, and then it goes down yeah. into. I believe so. Yeah. Another part of municipal, the municipal side of things is safety. Uh, that's police, fire, dispatch, and um, the police chief, for example, is hired by the town manager. Um, but with approval of the, the board, board of, of selectmen. selectmen. And then an example, and, and, and this, this um, or chart that the town manager put together for, for a public meeting, each of the departments on the municipal side much better than I've done here. But an example, and, and one that people are, I'm sure, very familiar with, would be the Department of Public Works. And um, you know they're responsible for main oh, there we go again. maintaining the grounds, um, plowing, plowing r roads, cleaning, uh, the, culverts. cleaning. They're cleaning right. the culverts. Cleaning the culverts today. So so this is how all of your all of the work gets done in the town. And I just want to emphasize that most most of most of the people in town, or a lot of the people in town, I shouldn't say most, are. Are actually volunteers. We 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 get their services. Yeah, didn't I hear that we for, have over for free. We actually, yeah, that's we actually. We have a high rate of volunteerism. Do, I don't think we have any opening. We, I don't think we have any openings, right. do we? The, uh, there might be a few. You just um, uh, if you're interested in something, you yeah. can apply, and then yep. you're, there's a there, there's a process. You go and uh, you get uh, an application from the clerk, um, and um, most of these appointed boards and committees are sort of appointed the same way. Uh, through the selectmen, um, and the selectmen have what's known as the Volunteer um, Appointment Subcommittee, the VASC, of which for the last two years I've served on with, with Dan Insminger. Um, and that's actually been a fascinating job, to be, to be honest, because we get to read all the resumes of people who are applying for, for things to do. And it, it's, it's really amazing that the, the, the breadth and depth of capacity and, and, and what people in, in town are really good at um, and and um, the skill set that they have to serve in a variety of ways uh, um, and, and it's great because I get to read all those resumes and it's like wow and people just say sure I'll, I'll, I'll help out and um, and again we have over 200 of them so um, it, it's what we call I, I don't really like this term but we have our daytime government we have our nighttime government daytime government is sort of the staff and um, the, town, the town manager, the superintendent, the schools, all the, all the public employees, and then the nighttime, nighttime government are all the boards and commissions that meet. That's the way we've chosen to organize it. Um, we should just call it government, because that's how, that's how we do it in Reading. And, and so, um, you know, between town meeting and all the different boards, it's probably close to 400 people that, yeah. uh, that, yeah, are, right. that are appointed and, and who work in various capacities. And, and Linda, to that point, um, I know when I got elected to town meeting, it was sort of a, a kind of a hectic time because we were, um, we were debating to, to do the high, the, the high school. That was a 55, $60 million program. At the Which end of the day, it's done. Well, that's yeah. another, that's a yeah. topic for another show. Yeah. Um, and, and so there was, you know, people, that was a, that was a big thing. So um, people organized and they were actually um, competitive seats for town meetings. So yeah. you'd have, you know, you have this 24 per per precinct, and then there's eight in it, in any time, you know, in, in any year. That it are up goes. for election. Yeah. And there were times where you had you had all eight precincts had competitive races. Now there's some precincts where um, they don't have, they can't even fill the eight. I should point out. I believe it's eight precincts with 24. 
24 per, yeah, total, per. Yeah. So but only eight, eight re-roll. But only eight, yeah. eight re-roll, right. Yeah. That's right. In any one year. And, I th- and I'm not sure the pap- whether the papers are due mid-February or end of January. It's usually mid-February, we should check like with the, yeah. clerk. the 18th or something. Mm-hmm. She tells you when you get your right. papers. Right. right. She tells you what date they have to be, because a lot of people will get them in December, because yeah. if you're a town meeting member, she'll send you a little notice and say, if you're still interested, you need to right. get your papers in. But if you haven't been a town meeting member, you you know, and you go to town hall to pay your taxes, ask her when are the applications going to be available to, you know, for town meeting. I'd like to be. And on. that's not the only way to get involved in town government. There's this whole, uh, sorry, askew section of appointed boards, committees, and commissions. There are something like 26 of those um, that do a lot of the heavy lifting for the town, and you will work with some very talented people. If you if an right. opening comes up on those boards, so I encourage you to get involved. That's how I got originally involved in town government, and you can also run for the board of selectmen or the school committee, um, and not just town, town meeting. There's other boards that that I didn't didn't mention. Actually, we can't um, forget our friends on the library. That, that's oh the, yeah, the, he's the, got it. The, the, the library trustees. We can't. Library, we library can't. trustees. Yeah, they have a big uh, box on the top of this. Reading, this will be on Reading the, Municipal on the, Light. Um, Board of Commissioners. Yeah, they could cut um, us off any minute. And, <laughs> and then the, the town moderator, of course. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways you can either run for elected office or just get involved in an appointed board committee. And you don't have to have any special requirements, just the desire to serve. Right. right. And, and after, a thick skin and a hard head. And a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of time. Well, this has been great. I think we've covered these subjects in, 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 in really good time, and I think you've been very thorough. Thank you. We're not going to be tested, aid, Andy. I, was, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't see fail. any tests, okay. and we'll do that off camera if we yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to say in conclusion about uh, this experience or things, you know, I know that your agendas are going to be busy and full right. over the next few right. months with a lot of things coming. You know, you have deadlines yeah. for certain things. and. Uh, we have a lot of important uh, issues coming up before town government. Please try to attend a, a board of selectmen meetings, um, just because we like to see people there. But Let if us the know weather's bad, feel. it's <laughs> great um, to watch it on RCTV. <laughs> or you could watch it on in your RCTV. favorite chair or with your favorite pillows. It's one of my. But it's favorite not fun talking to, to an empty room. So, no. right. so uh, come come to the meetings, get involved, raise your voice. Um, I'm sure the school committee would like to uh, hear the same. Um, and, and, and just get involved. Pay attention. Stay tuned. There will be websites, Facebook pages, all sorts of ways to get the information out on the issues that are, that are, that are coming up. Come to the budget meetings. Come to the selectmen meetings, the school committee meetings. But most importantly, get out and vote. I mean, this is a great forum. I really appreciate you taking the time and putting this together and inviting, inviting us here. Hopefully this show will be... Uh, well, help, this help, will help, help do that. So, clarify some of yeah. those things. So, so with have, that, have us on again. <laughs> with that, thank you, Barry. Thanks, Linda. Thank you, Andy, for coming. Thanks, thank Andy. you, Linda. Thank you for sharing your your expertise and your willingness and your time to be here. And we'll say, we said hello, Redding, when we started, and we'll say goodbye, Redding. <laughs> and we'll talk to you next time as we continue the series with the selectmen on what's happening in town. Hello, Redding, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. For watching. <laughs>